Okay, I'm back. Finally, three weeks. I haven't recorded a show in three weeks. This feels so awkward to me. Um, <laughs> it's it's like going on vacation and coming back and like driving a truck again. So we got <laughs> Kyle Matovic here. What's up, buddy? Nothing, man. Uh, happy to be with you. Um, life's been good these last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we, we've been keeping up with each other quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're uh, kind of taking the first couple steps into your health journey. And, uh, you know, my wife and I are going to be kind of taking a little vacation here um, right after we're done recording this tomorrow morning. We're going to be leaving for Ocean City or not Ocean City, but uh, New Jersey to go see Pantera and Metallica. And, you know, we're probably going to enjoy a few too many margaritas. So, uh, you know, I'll I'll pick up the slack you're leaving down. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So. <laughs> Why have I been absent? Well, um, number one, it's been freaking brutally hot here, and I've been extremely tired, and uh, I haven't recorded anything since that Scott Horton show that I recorded a couple of weeks ago. I, I have had a couple of shows planned, um, and some with you, and you know, like, we've been dealing with circumstances here at home. We'll get into it here in a minute. Um, and then, uh, another, another show that I had planned that I will be recording on Sunday. So we just had to postpone it a couple of weeks, but we'll, we'll be getting some shows out there that, that have been in the works, but, um, yes, my, my wife, as nobody knows, except for Kyle and a few of my close friends has been, was bitten by a copperhead. Uh, and so I've been playing Mr. Mom and, uh, doing hospital visits and then cooking and cleaning as best as I know how to clean, uh, as a disgusting redneck truck driver. Um, and you know, still doing the stuff I normally do outside watering and letting plants die because I overwatered, um, which, which really broke my heart because that was a special plant. So I'll have to get another one. Uh, so yes, there have been all kinds of things going on here dealing with snake bites and uh, chickens and eggs and dogs and wives and all that. So <laughs> yes, it has been, it has been a rocky road here the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems like you guys are making the best of it. Uh, you sent me the picture of the snakes and uh, yeah, let's just say I definitely would have been bitten too. I would, uh, my wife would be treating my leg right now the same way as you're treating bees. <laughs> it's, you know, man, I, I'm, I grew up in, around these things and i'm usually really good at spotting them and i miss this one and you know i felt like shit it, it reminded me of um uh, when i was younger right my brother and i had gone on uh we were living in a neighborhood that wasn't fully built so we went onto one of the construction sites my brother stepped on a nail oh. and and he pulled his like like you would do you just pull your foot off of it Typically, when you step on a nail, it's no big deal. I've stepped on nails. Many people have stepped on nails, gotten little cuts in their foot. So, so we that night, my parents for that night had tickets to the Astros game. So we pick up everybody, go to the Astros game. So dragging him through the stadium, and he's like the entire time he's bitching because he, I can't walk, my foot hurts. I can't walk, my foot hurts. I can't walk, my foot. Hurts. And I mean, he's like. I don't know. I don't remember how old. I think he was like nine or something like that. <laughs> there it is. I knew it was coming. Uh, you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he was like, he was like nine, maybe 10. I was like 13, 14. And so um, go to the Astros game, get home, go to bed, get up the next morning. His foot is like, boom, it's like a balloon. And, uh, you know, come to find out that the nail he happened to find to step on was rusty. And oh. so, so he ended up getting an infection in his foot, et cetera, et cetera. So I kind of felt like that because Beatrix always wears flip-flops. And she told me we were on the last lap we were making. We were, we were taking your advice. We were doing like a 10 minute walk. Um, around the property just around the house not even like into the property just around the house where i keep it really nice and mowed so it was really easy to see easy enough to miss as well and and so we're making we're on the last 30 seconds and she goes oh 
I hit my foot on a branch. I was like, come on, it's 30 seconds. Come on, just walk. And so I kind of felt like like I completely ignored her pain <laughs> until the next morning when she called me. I was at work getting in a truck, about to leave <clears throat> to go do a delivery. <clears throat> and she called me before I pulled out of the parking lot. And she's crying and has an accent. And I couldn't understand a fucking word she was saying. And <laughs> It's so, so I'm like, wait, 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 calm down, slow down. What the hell is happening? And she's like, I told you last night, I scraped my leg on a branch and we put Neosporin on it and it's not helping. My foot is swollen and blah, blah, blah. Well, when you look at the marks, there were three marks on her, on her foot. And mm -hmm. when you looked at them and she told you, she scraped her leg or foot up on a branch. You're like, oh, I can see that. But as soon as she told me my foot is swelling and I can't put any weight on it, I was like, was that a snake bite? <laughs> bite I feel <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like you would know a snake bite from a uh, a branch, like pretty not notably. necessarily because okay. we were walking. Yeah. So what it looks like happened because it was drugged down her heel, basically. Uh. It was two drag marks. Uh, a small like space and then another drag mark mm. it looked like what happened is it she stepped right in front of its head and as she was taking a step it struck uh but it didn't like pierce the skin or anything it did it pierced the uh. skin there was blood uh but it was it but it wasn't like it would it looked like scratches mm -hmm. it didn't look like it wasn't penetrating marks like right. two bang marks it was scratches so it pin it pierced the skin and injected just enough venom to bother her severely <laughs> so so yeah so it was just one of those situations where um i didn't see it typically i'm pretty good at spotting them i missed this one somehow um and and it bit her and it didn't it wasn't a clean bite, which is making for her healing process to be a little bit easier on her. So, uh, though she is still pretty miserable because, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be putting weight on your foot that just got, has venom like circulating in it. Yeah. You want that venom to circulate through your body to dilute, right? right. So that it's not right. focused in one area. If yeah. you're putting a lot of weight in circulation in that one area, that venom stays in that area. It kills all that tissue. So you want it to dilute throughout your body. So therefore it's not destroying the tissue just in your foot. Sure. So, yeah. So, you would one thing that comes to mind quickly is uh, like socks that kind of wrap around your feet. I've heard this before. Now I don't know how much evidence there is for this, but um, there's certain socks that are supposed to be like compression socks. Right. And they're supposed to help with blood flow back up to your heart. So like sprinters and people use that to once again, help with blood flow back to their heart. And um, you know, the fact that you guys are walking is obviously good because when you get blood to your extremities, that helps recovery as well. So, I mean, that, right. that overall makes sense. Um, But you know, obviously right now, if you can't put weight on it, you kind of can't fucking put weight on it. Right. Right. So they yeah. wanted to, they want her to keep uh, keep the foot elevated so that it's pushing the venom up through her system. Yeah. The swelling is mostly down. Her foot's no longer black like it was the picture I sent you. Mm -hmm. It was it's um uh, it's got kind of like you know like when your when your bruises start to heal they got to get that greenish yellow <clears throat> tint yeah, to right. them. It kind of looks like that. So um but the swelling's down like almost completely. Um, she's just experienced some pain. She's still yeah. still dealing with some pain, and it tends to be because I go to work, and then, then she wants to do stuff during the day. She wants to try to cook for herself or whatever when I'm not here. And then I get home, and I'm like, "Did you clean the kitchen?" And she's like, "No, that wasn't me." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay." So <laughs> can't and yeah, she's just that's just who she is. So like, what am I supposed to do about it? Yeah. I can't I can't chain her to the bed. She still has to work and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was if i chain her to the bed i have to change the sheets and i don't want to do that <laughs> i think uh, some people have this conception and maybe i'm guilty of it as well that like when you hear venomous i think people tend to think that, that automatically means like you're fucked if you get bit um mm. i guess that's not the case then huh 
typically with copperheads it's not the case like okay. uh, typically with copperheads worst case scenario was you'll lose a body part mm-hmm. it's kind of like getting bit by a brown recluse it just sure. eats away at the tissue mm-hmm. so so you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily die uh from a copperhead bite um rattlesnakes are a little more venomous cotton mouths are a little more venomous so you you're much more likely to die from a rattlesnake or a cotton mouth than you are from a copperhead even a coral snake is more likely to kill you than a copperhead even though you're much less likely to get bit by a coral snake than you are any other snake that i mean you really got to be fucking around to get bit by a coral snake yeah so my brother funny enough is like way into reptiles animals and stuff like that and what i've gathered from his knowledge on this stuff is that it seems to be like most snakes typically won't really fuck with you unless you really fuck with them um <clears throat> well the problem with copperheads um most snakes will try to like flee they'll try to get away right. from you a rattlesnake will alert you by shaking its rattle and be like hey bitch i'm right here <laughs> fuck around watch and out. out you know i know you're there now you know i'm here stay the fuck away from me right yeah uh, a cotton mouth typically will try to get away from you and they also have a scent gland similar to a skunk so they'll mm-hmm. put off a smell yeah. that that tells you hey you know like hold on what's that smell i, I smell something all right well, copperheads freeze that's because they're so uh, camouflaged i showed you those pictures yeah they're so camouflaged they'll freeze mm-hmm. right and so they feel that like predators won't find them if they freeze because they're so camouflaged right. but if you step right near its head it's gonna, it's gonna be like this motherfucker's trying to get me yeah you see what i'm saying so mm-hmm. it could it probably what was occurring in the situation was it was in a spot frozen and she stepped directly in front of its face. That makes sense. Because typically you won't get bit by a, a snake unless you're right on top of it. Typically they try to get away from you, except for copperheads, they will freeze. And that's why so many people get bit by copperheads because they do freeze and people step on them, not realizing there's a snake right there. Yeah. well it, it, it to me almost sounds like she was far enough away from it that it probably had to lunge at her because that would in my mind the way i'm seeing this is that like it probably went for the leg but then wasn't close enough so it just probably scratched but couldn't pierce maybe i'm full of shit but that's kind of how i'm thinking about well it. no what i'm thinking what i'm thinking and like we're just now it's just like guessing here I, like, there's no way of knowing but what yeah. i'm thinking happened is she was in the middle of the step whenever it struck so okay. it just scratched on her right. foot. And so, you know. Mm-hmm. So because because what's gonna happen if you step in front of a snake, it's gonna rear back. Like, fuck you, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if you freeze there, then you're no longer a threat to that snake. And I only know this because I almost stepped on a cotton mouth once when I was a kid. And so I'm like standing next to this fucking thing, and I'm like, oh shit. I can't move if I move. And I always knew that if you step near a snake, just freeze. That's because they can, they see, they can sense your motion. They, 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 and they have heat seeking um, abilities Lines. within their tongue okay. like where they can feel heat. So they know you're there, but if you're not moving, you're not a threat. So it's kind of like one of these things where they kind of get an idea and they can see people often say that snakes are blind. They're not blind. I mean, I guess some are, but most aren't blind. They can see. It's just, they don't have great vision. I mean, but they can see, so they can see the shape of what's in front of them. But that movement, that, that jerking scares them. And it's like, I have to defend myself. Yeah. You know? Because they are vulnerable, because they do have limited sensors and and sensory, and so there is this defense mechanism that comes into play. So I'm thinking what happened is she stepped in front of it, and then when she went to step forward again with that same foot, Uh, oh, they they it was like fuck you, bitch, yeah. Yeah. It saw the jerk in motion and thought, all right, man, yeah, let's fucking go. 
Yeah, I, I've seen a couple snakes in my yard. Right now, um, what I take my dogs for a walk in the morning, it's usually anywhere from like uh, 5 to like maybe 5.30 at the very latest that I start walking my dogs. I just always got to watch out for skunks. In fact, I saw one this morning and uh, both, you know, Lily and Axon have both had run-ins with skunks before. So um, they, they really do not like them. So um, usually like as, as soon as I leave my house, there's like an alleyway that I go down. There will sometimes be skunks right around that corner. So I always kind of got to grab them and pull them close. But now I have like an eye for it. Like I'm always looking around and, you know, if it's real dark, I may bust out a flashlight and just kind of shine around and make sure there's no skunks around. But yeah, I've, I've had a few experiences with them. Typically they'll try to run away, but yeah, you, <laughs> you'll know if they spray. <laughs> <laughs> the dog, the dog I had in the truck with me before I had, boogie was he was such a good dog man so i would i would get out of the truck and he would sit there in the truck and i would look around and i would i would try to figure out do i need a leash on him or not and he would stay in the truck with the door open Mm -hmm. and then i would if i did not need a leash on him i would say come and i would point and he would jump out of the truck sit next to my feet and wait gotcha and that's that black and white dog. That's that picture of me where I'm like sitting on my front porch. Oh, right. That black and white dog. That was him. He was amazing. He was such a fucking brilliant dog. So I would say, come and I'd point and he'd sit wherever I pointed and he'd wait until I told him to go. And I would point to where I wanted him to go and he would go there. Wow. Well, one time we stopped at um, Nestle Waters in Dallas and it was middle of the night no other trucks around he needed to use the bathroom he hadn't been out of the truck in like eight hours so i was like all right i need to get him out to use the bathroom i was like well while i'm hooking up the truck i can let him go pee here because Uh, because there's nobody else there's no other trucks around right you know so i told him to get out i told him go and he goes and i'm getting my truck hooked up i get all the lights hooked up and i'm doing my walk around and as i'm walking around the trailer I see him and he's there sniffing and he's, he's peeing and all that. And I'm like, okay. And then something caught my attention and and I looked up again and he's running and he's running the opposite direction. And I'm like, Hey, where the hell are you going? And then I see what he's running after. <laughs> and there's a skunk and this skunk could not have gotten away fast enough, lifted his tail sprayed my dog turned around and ran right back to me the skunk ducked up under the fence and took off into the woods and i was like you son of a bitch you got sprayed by a skunk and we're stuck in this truck for another fucking week you motherfucker luckily it didn't hit him it didn't get him yeah but it scared the shit out of him that smell ran him off so yeah. yeah i lucked out with that one i did i have had a dog sprayed by a skunk before and that was a pain in the ass to get it all get that smell yeah so i've had two experiences i remember the one day i think i woke up a little bit early and i'm like man this could be a fucking great day today i i I can remember just feeling really really good so i start walking the dogs it's five o'clock in the morning right on the dot i start walking and there's like this uh house with some stairs in this alleyway and i remember watching both of them go up and i'm like oh that's not good and then they came back down and then i saw the skunk come out i'm like oh you gotta be fucking kidding me and like i didn't really think anything of it i could smell it a little bit but i you know it didn't like click and axon was sitting there like flicking his face yep. and i kept walking and then i'm like all right now he's fucked up so i come back home and i'm like sarah we gotta like we gotta fucking take care of this they both need baths so it's like five o'clock in the morning i think she didn't have to work that day so like you know thankfully everything was cool but you know of course we had to keep them separated and it was it was a pain yeah and you and got then- and you- you got to use tomato juice and this mm. and that. And it's like it takes well, we we didn't have any of that shit initially. So like we, I think they they said use baking powder, uh, dish soap, and uh, vinegar or no no no, uh, not rubbing alcohol. Uh, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Oh, okay. That actually seemed to work. Um, yeah, the second time was Lily had went over to my side yard and I remember watching this all play out. 
I, she like jumped at it and i remember watching the white tail like curve up and bounce <laughs> back and then i saw her go for it again and then i'm like oh no yeah and i smelled it and she came up she came running back up and i'm like there's two retaining walls she had to jump one and then jump another i remember she's sitting there like constantly licking yeah. and her eyes are huge she stinks <laughs> she looks like she just got like traumatized i'm like so she just got that's amazed. what you get <laughs> She got bear sprayed by the police. Yeah, and <laughs> she I was in was the middle weird. of a Black Lives Matter rally and <laughs> fucking got bear sprayed by the cops. Yeah, that was exactly what happened. And I think this was literally <laughs> like not even a month after that first encounter. So you know, sure enough, I'm like, all right, Sarah. <laughs> well, she got sprayed by a fucking skunk too. So uh, we got all all showered up. But yeah, she looked devastated when she came back, and I'm like, well. Now you guys know, leave the fucking skunks alone. <laughs> that fucker stink. <laughs> yeah. But and they're not fast either. They are not very fast. So, you know, both my dogs, they're fucking quick. They'll <laughs> they'll be able to go right to them. So now, you know, if I ever see them when we're out, I usually just run so that way they'll run with me. Or yeah. um, you know, I'll just pull them away. Yeah. Yeah. I and you know, it's like, um, all right, so Pinky, when I had him. He had gotten bit by a copperhead, so he had to deal with that. And then Slayer got bit by a copperhead. And then, but Pinky, he learned that first time. Anytime he'd see a snake, it didn't matter what kind of snake it was, he'd fucking go berserk. He'd see that snake, he'd start barking and growling and carrying on for himself. And uh, he wouldn't get near it because he knew that's that son of a bitch that bit me. I ain't <laughs> fucking with this thing. And so, and then um, Butters has been bit twice. Um, Boogie hadn't been bit once and this year is so dry. We typically down here in the Southeast Texas area, we get a lot of rain, mm -hmm. um, uh, between spring and summer. It's been so dry. Yeah. I hadn't seen, but one, and it was a baby. It still had a green tail. And in order to understand what I'm talking about, you'd have to go Google copperhead babies that you'll see their tail has a different color. They grow out of it. They they lose that color, but but it still had a green tail. And I killed it. It was by my barn. It was over on the other side of the yard. I've been able to mow so much more of the property on the other side of my chicken coops because it's been so dry, mm -hmm. even though it's a low area, and I hadn't seen any, and usually that's where I always kill them. I usually kill about four or five a year over in that area. This year, I hadn't seen any, and that's where she got bit. It was over there. It was like, motherfucker. You know. So, so it's like the humidity or uh, the wetness draw snakes in, or does it kind of keep them away? They, well, well, copperheads are are um, cousins to uh, water moccasins or cotton mouths, as we call them down here in the south. Yeah. Um, they're cousins. They're basically the same snake. They just have okay. different colorings they're they're attracted to damp areas gotcha. they like the wet humid hot area so if it's drier you're less likely to see them you're more likely to see a rattlesnake in a dry area which they're all three pit vipers but rattlesnakes just aren't quite as attracted to the the wet whereas copperheads and water moccasins or cotton mouse whatever you would rather call them um are are attracted to that wet area so yeah. um we don't i've only seen one cotton mouth on my property just mm -hmm. one and it was on the back side of my property on the other side of the pond in between the pond and the and the woods i it really wasn't an area to bother anybody yeah. and in, i mean my parents owned this property for 16 years before i bought it they never saw one I've seen one, mm. right? So it's like in 20 years, we've seen one cottonmouth on this property. Yeah, not an it's issue. All, the only venomous snake we see on this property that that will cause any issues is copperhead. Mm -hmm. Um, the the all the rest of the snakes we have out here are pretty are are non venomous, and you could probably you could walk up to most of them and just pick them up. Yeah, you know, I mean, they might bite you, but they ain't gonna hurt you, you know. Yeah. Might, draw, might draw a little blood but it ain't gonna hurt you because we have yellow belly water snakes we have speckled king snakes mm -hmm. we have rat snakes garter snakes worm yeah. snakes i don't know what else to call them other than worm snakes uh there's these little six inch long brown 
snakes that burrow in the ground yeah. like like freaking moles <clears throat> and then um i think that's pretty much it yeah i've yeah. seen a couple garter snakes in my yard not uh very common i'd just be worried about one of my dogs seeing it i i know um I've I've had moles in my yard quite a few times, and Axton's got a hold of them, and it's pretty funny because he'll shake his head and just fucking ship them. <laughs> he'll send him flying across the fucking yard. So I, like I, that, I tried... like that video of the dog with the snake you sent me the other day. Oh no, oh, that's God, another that's one. Weird. I that's another one we do have. We have a uh, the the ringback water snake, it, but like water snakes, like they don't bother me. I, I if you see a snake and it's black, if it's solid black, leave it alone. Yeah, because it eats other snakes. Oh, uh, okay. So, and if and like then you have your king snakes that eat other snakes. So, like I leave non-venomous snakes alone, which yeah. is how I ended up getting two of my ducks eaten by a rat snake because mm. I don't kill rat snakes normally. <laughs> I yeah. just leave them alone. And these rat snakes are like they're like they're constrictors, so they'll get up to like seven oh. feet long. Oh Jesus! Yeah. yeah, well, the one I caught in my coop eating my ducks, it had eaten two of my ducks that day. <laughs> Fucking, That'd be a hell of a sight that, to see. Fat son of a bitch. He was six foot long. Yeah, and he had eaten two of my ducks, so I cut his head off and threw him to threw him to the turtles in the pond because I was like, "You motherfucker! Like I would have let you be. I, yeah. I, I've let you be <laughs> all this time. You yeah. know, <laughs> like you know, but but like." those snakes aren't going to bother you. They're not going to hurt you. They're going to try to stay away from you. You could walk up to them and pick them up, you know, well, unless you're a duck, apparently. Yeah. Unless you're a duck. <laughs> well, these were baby ducks to be fair. Yeah, okay. They were, yeah. they were only, they were only about two months old, but mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Yeah. Now my ducks will kill them. Like mm -hmm. well, the one duck I have left, all the other ones got taken by coyotes. Oh geez! If you want to know a real predator, when you talk about coyotes, <laughs> yeah, I, you know what's funny? I I don't know if I ever told you this. I forget what kind of dog my great uncle Gary has, and he's like almost blind. Um, I want to say it's a Bernese Mountain Dog. This fucker was huge. It was like probably one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen in my fucking life. But yeah, he had that dog because he lives up in the uh, mountains in Brookville. And yeah. uh, they get bears and shit up there. And this dog would literally fight off bears if they yeah. came near the property. Right. And uh, yeah, it was a big, like white, real, not like real long <clears throat> hair, but longer hair that curled a little bit, I think. Well, that's like Rhodesian Ridgebacks were bred to fight lions, mm. you know? And I, I mean, that's what that dog's for. You know, pit bulls is much of a bad freaking um reputation as they have were actually bred to be farm animals right they were bred to protect livestock and they're good at it man my dogs protect the shit out of my chickens mm. my dogs will be barking at the sky if they see a hawk yeah yeah because they're like no nope, stay away from our fucking chickens you know <laughs> like they they're they're serious about their chickens they love their chickens man and yeah like butters used to fight slayer when he was a when slayer was still alive butters was a puppy butters would get in between slayer and the chickens because slayer would try to chase the chickens butters was like nope you don't chase the chickens and he'd yeah. step in front of him and, and stop him and not let him chase the chickens huh. you know so yeah they're, yeah i mean i'm, I'm they're sure really you know, good just, at that you know just as well as i do they're very very loyal and i mean lily um, when it comes to like Sarah, I, she's just all about us at all times. She's very, very loving, especially like all the uh, our nieces and nephews and stuff. They just absolutely love kids and are very, very protective. They never seek to hurt people, which, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people disagree with that statement. But like uh, the people they're familiar with, it's like ride or die. Right, right. Yeah. Right. No, and they're they're great. Like the only chicken that Boogie has a problem with is Webster. And I That's have like a, a pretty one, is it? No, no, she's a little. I've had her for like two years now. <laughs> she's a little bitty black bantam. So she's I I called her Webster because she's a like little midget black chicken. Um, and so, and so I named her Webster, but she thinks she's a pet. Mm -hmm. And and I'll be if I'm sitting outside, she'll come and perch on my foot, and then bow her back down for me to scratch her back. 
Mm-hmm. And Boogie gets jealous. Ah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, hey bitch yeah, that's my attention <laughs> damn it yeah, right and i'm like no leave webster alone boogie you know mm. so but yeah yeah so he uh that's the only chicken that he has any issues with it's that one and it's because she thinks she's a pet and she'll come sit on my leg and on my foot and just kind of perch there and make her little sounds and i'll scratch her back and then he gets all irritated yeah it's it's, it's- Something that I've noticed is that more and more people are getting chickens, which I think is pretty fucking cool. Like my bass player and uh, singer, I think I've told you, they have the, uh, they breed Frenchies, they breed cane corsos or Italian mastiffs, they have chickens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, they have like a whole fucking zoo at their house. But I mean, you know, seeing people become autonomous, you know, by their own choice is pretty, pretty, fr- or is uh, really neat. And they've even given me eggs before too, which is, you know, it's just cool. Oh, shit. and they're so good. Yeah. There's nothing better than fresh eggs, man. That yolk is so dark and rich, and you're like, oh, geez. I don't know what they do to the ones that I get from the store, but they don't taste (laughs) anything like this. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, now, I'm more familiar with, like, cows and ruminants, which one interesting thing that I found out was I think it's uh, giraffes are the largest ruminant animals, which basically means just they have, like, multi-chambers in their stomachs. Mm. Um, and another thing that I learned is also that giraffes one-on-one versus a lion, like, a lion will not try to take on a giraffe oh, no. 1v1. Yeah, because the giraffe will fuck them up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, giraffes yeah. are huge, man. Yeah. Yeah, giraffes um, are, are monstrous. It, it usually takes the – even if it's uh, typically in a lion uh, pack – it's it's just the females that hunt, but when it comes to um, wildebeest and giraffes, the yeah. males have to be involved in the hunt. And mm-hmm. usually, if it's it, usually a, uh, a, uh, um, it, it's it's the lions that have multiple males that are that that are within that pride that yeah. actually go after giraffes. One male lion will not take down a giraffe. You have to have at least two, maybe three, plus four or five females. It takes a lot to get those big ass motherfuckers down. Well, yeah, because when when you see them at like a zoo, it's one thing because you got the fence, and Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's not the same thing as like whenever I saw them at Kruger National Park, and we're just driving down this little dirt trail, and this giraffe crosses the road. And it's like, yeah, we're going to stop because this motherfucker is going to crush us, you know? Yeah. And it's the same with elephants, too. Uh, it, elephants, wildebeest, and um, giraffes. Yeah, they. it's going to take multiple lions, and it usually takes four to five females plus one, like two to three males to get them down. Yeah, so like a giraffe can generate, it's like 2,000 pounds with one of their kicks. So I mean, you got to imagine that kicking a line like that could destroy their shoulder that could really fuck them up but yeah i remember watching a video they can't jump high enough to get to their windpipe so like you said they really have to get them on the ground before they can really oh yeah they got to drag them down from behind yeah yeah Yeah. they go for the legs and they try to fucking pull it down and i made a mistake i said wildebeest it's not wildebeest it's the uh water buffalo it's, uh is that yeah. the one with the, the dark one with the horns that kind yeah, of, that kind of curl yeah 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 they're so big they're mm. beautiful but yeah it takes it takes female lions typically will not hunt water buffalo mm. they they wait for the male lion to to join in on the hunt to take down a water buffalo and they usually have to be desperate to go for it it usually has to be like they're on the verge of a dry season and they know all the prey is leaving and yeah. so yeah huh yeah. another uh interesting fact that i learned is that hippos actually kill like exponentially more people every year than sharks like like some people... like twenty two thousand people a year or something like that oh geez i didn't think that yeah much. it's it's a lot well hippos are like super territorial and not only that um they'll tear like, your really boat fast. in half like <laughs> yeah they're fucking fast swimmers too like there's yeah. um i remember looking at videos and seeing these people in like a smaller boat and there's this fucking hippo just hauling ass behind him so like yeah i mean we all think the hungry hunger hippos cute when you're sitting there playing with your board game but don't go near <laughs> one of them fuckers they will fuck you up <laughs> yeah they will tear you to shreds man yeah those fucking things are mean yeah mm-hmm. for sure 
Yeah, I think I, I remember reading somewhere, for some reason, I remember reading somewhere, it was something like 22,000 people a year die from hippos. Wow. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I thought, I think I read like four or 500 somewhere, but maybe I'm getting the numbers mixed up. I, I could be wrong. It could be, it, it could be 22,000 in comparison to something else. I, I, but I just, for some reason, that number 22,000 sticks out in my mind. It was, it was some, it, but it, yeah, it was an enormous number, even more than like crocodiles and, and stuff like that. Like hippos are like the most vicious river animal there is. Yeah. Yeah. You do not go near hippos in the yeah. wild because they're incredibly territorial and those are big fat fuckers that you probably can't kill that easily. So like when you think about sharks though, sharks don't like, they don't hunt prey. Like they won't go up to a human and try to eat it because they're hungry or anything like that. If they see blood or something, they will. But typically like if they're trying to get near you, if they're, if they're swimming like slowly, they're not going to bite you. But like, if you see one starting to move a little bit quicker, that means you're probably going to get fucking bit. I was reading a book about it. Um, while Sarah and I were waiting to meet Kelly Clarkson, and they literally said, "If you, you have were, a wait, spear wait, wait, gun, wait, 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 you were doing what?" I, was, <laughs> I took Sarah up to New York City, and this was this is a whole other experience. But I took her up there to go meet Kelly Clarkson, and you know that this kind of like how we have like this me casa su casa where like is that that chick the, is that that chick from American Idol, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's been big now for like ever and a half, but um, so like. You know, I take her to go meet Kelly Clarkson back in June up in New York City. And we both like realized, holy fuck, New York City's a fucking shithole. And then now, like, we get, you know, she saw Pantera and, and uh, Lamb of God with me on Friday night. And then this weekend, we're going to go see uh, Pantera Metallica on Friday and then Metallica again on Sunday um, because they're doing like a whole weekend thing. So um, I, I was, I was proud though. Like, the hallmark of like a good relationship is a situation like this where your wife is a Kelly Clarkson fan and she does not like heavy metal, but she goes to the concert with you and then says, go into the mosh pit. Um, I'm enjoying this concert right now. I can't understand the word they're saying, but I'm enjoying this. Like, <laughs> if, if, if your girlfriend or wife, you know, is doing this for you then you probably have things relatively well if you know if your wife's approved about it then you might need to do some work there there might be something missing here but i that was like another check on the box for me and you know obviously i have no qualms with my wife at all but like that's how i know i'm like we we got something good here <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah well, my wife's a metalhead so i don't have to worry about it right. the only thing i have to deal with is this goddamn electronic dance music she likes to listen to every once in a while and i'm like oh shit so i sent her to england for two weeks so she can go see one of their concerts and i don't have to go um so, <laughs> win-win situation yeah i mean that's like the you know that's 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 my that's my give and take there i'm like okay you can go to england spend two weeks with your mom visit your friends and go to one of their concerts i don't have to go <laughs> Because somebody has to stay here and feed the chickens and feed the dogs and do all this shit around the house. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to keep you too long, but I also wanted to kind of get into what's been going on. Because I have not been on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been paying attention to shit. I know Donald mm. Trump, had got charged with something, and and now there's, like, all this well, people are starting to recognize that there's evidence that Joe Biden was involved in all these deals. What else is happening in the world of politics, man? Dude, it's been I've same, been, I swear. I've been gone for two weeks. I haven't looked at a damn thing in politics. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm busy. I got things to do. So. <laughs> now, it just seems like the same shit. Like, I swear to God, it's like we're reliving the same cycle over and over again. Like, Trump gets indicted. Another thing comes out about Joe Biden figuring out that he's corrupt. It's like the same shit just keeps happening over and over and over again. Like, yes, yeah, so we understand the deep state hates Trump. We understand Joe Biden's corrupt. We understand nothing's going to change. And this is going to just be all the way until the 2024 election cycle. Um, you know, the money's going to keep going to Ukraine. Uh, they just signed a $345 million <clears throat> arms deal with Taiwan. It's just going to be nonstop escalations left and right. I, I can't be bothered to have an opinion on this at all times. I was actually talking to uh, Brady Leonard about this, who is a uh, really, really good dude, host of the No Gimmicks podcast. I just did a live stream with him, with him before we hopped on here. 
And uh, he was like, yeah, man, I just can't have a take on everything at all times. Like there's stuff that him and I both kind of agreed on this, like shit that you'll see and you'll just intentionally block out. Like, I just, I can't have an opinion on this right now. Like, I don't know. I don't want to (laughs) know. He was saying he kind of does that stuff with the libertarian party. And I find myself more and more closely aligned (laughs) perspective as well. So yeah, it's just another Trump indictment. And it's like, yeah, we know they're just going to fucking go nuts, do everything they can to tarnish this dude's reputation. And his base is going to act one way. You know, the Democrat base is going to act another way. And I think a lot of people just kind of look at it and like this Uh, fucking dog, a pony show is so old. So what do you think is happening here though? Do you think there's actually like, like some actual dirt there and there's actually something going to happen because I don't know. I have a I have a hard time believing they're actually going to go through with anything because then it's just going to be a tit for tat, right? Yeah. The- I, in order to maintain the kayfabe, right, the professional wrestling deal, um, Trump is like the best thing that Democrats could ever ask for because they can like fundraise easily off of him. And he evokes such like a visceral reaction on both sides where like the hard right wingers all love Trump and will support Trump no matter what. I mean, you see that by the polling um, and like the far left wingers, they hate him and they're all going to rally <laughs> specifically against him no matter what. So do they would they actually go through on a charge? I really don't think so, because I think they realize if they go through with that, then like you said, it sets the precedent. And now, you know, now it's just going to be tit for tat. And I don't think the electorate in general really wants that blood for blood 24 seven. I think they want some blood that much is clear, but I don't think they want like, holy fuck, we're just constantly reining in our political foes and throwing them in prison. And like, yeah, they're doing that to dissidents, but like on a presidential scale, I don't think they want that fucking smoke because I think that's when people are going to start losing their fucking minds. And people are losing their minds already, but I think that it, it gets pretty fucking gross when uh, you get down to that level where you're literally imprisoning political foes like consistently. Well, how, I mean, how inevitable is that though? Um because when you think that in a, in the situation that we live in today, yeah. nobody's talking, right? Yes. Nobody is, nobody's communicating. There's, and I'm not saying I want these people to agree on anything. Cause usually that's when the real bad shit happens. When they, right. Bipartisan you're, typically means you're getting uh, fucked. Right. Yeah. It means <laughs> that people get fucked. But, but at the same time, there's, there's, there is this whole idea that like, if there's no communication, between the two factions then those factions have essentially turned into the bloods and the crips the enemies yeah you see what i'm saying yeah and the only thing you left to do is to fight i feel like on a national level within the united states they disagree along very superficial borders where you have like kind of your outliers where I would say like maybe your Matt Gates, Thomas Massey, Rand Paul, um, and even like some of the squad are a little bit more notable. And they, in some very, very small situations, may be willing to reach across the aisle, but then like the rest of your majority who you couldn't name, like I think my con my congressional rep is Guy Reschenthaler. Um, he's going to vote with, you know, the rest of the uniparty, essentially, as cringe as that is to say. He's going to vote with the uniparty majority of the time. Same with, like, most of these other people. Um, Now, where I think, at least I'm naturally optimistic, I think seeing, you know, Matt Gates and even some of the people on the squad who are pretty much horrible on anything, when those people talk, I think that kind of incentivizes people to lower their guard a little bit, where, like, you know, Matt Gates is a little bit more of a culture warrior, but he still is willing to work. It with... is, I heard, I heard he uh, is is um, promoting a bill to cut U.S. aid to foreign countries. Yes, yes, he's actually done a lot of really, really good stuff. He's really stupid on China, but like my God, everywhere else, he's. I would say some of his work is heroic. Um, he's put forth a bunch of um, war powers acts against Syria. I think he even did one for Somalia. Um, he did have a bad vote where he voted to maintain sanctions on Syria. Um, I, it didn't seem like that was like a real strong opinionated vote on his part. So I'm not like knocking him too bad on that. And uh, he also put a, together like a lot of bills for like auditing Ukraine uh, aid and then also put like the Ukraine fatigue aid or something like that it was some bill to help you know stop spending so much money for the war in ukraine so it, when it comes to those efforts he's absolutely heroic but then like he'll 
he literally said there's a, so there's a listening post in Cuba that's that uh, China installed. Now this has been there for like 20 plus years. Um, he said we should give Biden military authority to strike that in, you know, that listening post in Cuba, because if not, we're going to be speaking Mandarin or something like that, like just absolute nonsensical, retarded stuff. But everywhere else, solid. I, I would not knock him anywhere else. But just on the China stuff, like, dude, just open a book. That's all you got to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I still don't. <clears throat> I don't have like strong opinions on China. I don't, but I'm not as, I don't think, I don't think I'm quite as confident as Patrick McFarland is that China's not a threat and that's no knock on Patrick. Me and Patrick are great friends, of course. Um, but it's because, because of Be Beatrix being from South Africa, knowing what China's role is in South Africa, I kind of feel like it's almost like um they're they're trying to to uh i don't know how to say it they're it's like this soft push for power. so basically people the the accusation leveled against china and i think this is actually a reasonable accusation is uh what's called debt trap diplomacy where um much like the u.s will basically sanction countries and bomb countries into compliance i think china is seeking to kind of do that through debt so the saying that i've heard and i kind of like using is that basically the u.s goes in there with bombs and then china goes in there with briefcase well where do you, who do you think you're going to develop more friends with you're probably going to get more friends doing a briefcase right Right, but right, the problem right. is, is that China is in such bad economic and like it's like they're, it's like they're rolling in a Trojan horse. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I do think it is debt trap diplomacy. But the question is, and this is where, you know, we kind of when we talk about de-dollarization, um, you can't plot any of this shit like to make a prediction on this shit is so like I, I, I can't do it. I'm not well enough informed and I don't think anybody else really is either. Um, when you look at like China demographic wise, their population is going to be halved in like 30 years. Um, they overestimated the amount of people that they have like my age, actually our age, so like 20 to 50 by 100 million um, by their own stats. And Wait, that's like what a do you mean? They, what do you people. mean they overestimated? They so like they, they didn't actually they, count. They thought they had a lot more people. And I that, thought they were good at age. math. No, no, no. Apparently these Asians aren't good at math at all. <laughs> so um, like a lot of their working population, um, there's not nearly as many. And they're facing kind of the same problem that we're facing here in the U.S., where you have a lot of people going into retirement mm -hmm. and not enough people paying in for those people's retirement. And especially because like China had the one child policy, like their right. whole demographic decline has kind of been in place for like the last 15 years or so okay. so the idea that they have like a lot of military force is kind of silly because like what are they going to do conscript a bunch of like 40 year old pre-diabetic people because they're so malnourished um to go fight wars it, it's not it would make no sense that wouldn't happen and not only that the people hate their government there so much because of the one child policy because of strict you know, especially strict covid policies there's just no incentive for them <laughs> to want to go fight for their country um now you think the other so? thing is yeah oh i i believe so yeah mm -hmm. and especially like so they'll use i just kind of have a feeling that that i don't i don't know why and i mean we don't buy into the, all the bullshit that u.s says i guess i'm just kind of like of the mindset that the chinese kind of just buy into their bullshit uh i i'm sure they probably did at one point but you know if you were told that you can only have one child for so long and, you know, just living in a country like China, who is relatively poor, and you see all that stuff going on, I can't imagine that you really feel that good about their country. And the, I remember Pete talking about this when he was on Tim Cast, is saying that, you know, they're writing cultural manifestos over there. So now as to how widespread this is, I couldn't tell you because I'm not that quite that in touch when it comes to like china culturally but i really don't think that they're going to go take up arms for their country like i'm sure there would be some but i don't think they're going to be ready to go storm you know the beach to california like blake masters said they would which is just a ridiculous proposition on its face <laughs> if i had um, a name like blake masters i'd be starting a video game <laughs> based on my life right um, like, so like duke nukem 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all, all out of gum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the, all those old first person shooters where you just kind of you know bob around and kill demons and stuff. Um, but no, as far as like China buying up stuff all over the world, I do think it's debt trap diplomacy. But their economic situation and also the demographic uh, situation, I think doesn't sustain them for a very very long time i've listened to a lot of like peter zihan and uh he seems to be really keyed in like demographic stuff and he believes by 2030 that like china as we know it right now will be completely different um now i don't put 100 faith in that but i do put a decent bit of stock in it so like if it didn't come true mm-hmm. by 2030 that china would be completely different than we understand it now um, I wouldn't be surprised, but if it was, I wouldn't be surprised either. So it could go either way, but I, I think um, that the way they are lending out loans to do this one belt, one road initiative, I think it is predatory, but the question is how long can they sustain that? Because, you know, they're in such bad financial shape, but once again, we prop them up, they prop, we kind of prop, you know, China and America themselves are kind of doing their own deal. They kind of piggyback off one another and it's kind of maintained by once again, they need dollars so that way they can go do all this stuff. And then we need their goods. So that way, you know, everyone here is fat and happy. So what do you make of um, Russia and China talking about um, going straight cryptocurrency and getting away from the petrodollar? Do you think think that's, that's, do you think that's actually a, a realistic thing or, do you think it's all just Western propaganda? Um, I could see it happening, but I don't know that Saudi Arabia would necessarily kowtow to them. Um, it seems like every time Saudi Arabia kind of like starts to get a little cocky and starts to give shit to the U.S., it seems like they like slip out more 9-11 documents. So like there was that canister or I hope I'm saying this right. Adam would know better than me, but the oh, yeah, documents. I, yeah, yeah. The one I had had him on to talk about. Um, yeah, but this yeah. was like, I'm sure you remember everybody was saying, oh, Saudi Arabia is not taking phone calls from Joe Biden. Then just conveniently, those Canestrero documents come out. So like, it just seems like we always kind of tap them back into place. Well, because now, it's not Joe yeah. Biden. And that's where people get exactly, all fucked yeah. up. Like, right. like Joe, like <laughs> this is the way I look at the whole Donald Trump shit. Chuck Schumer's told us the the intelligence agencies have six ways from Sunday to get back at you. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. And yep. Donald Trump declared war on the intelligence agencies. You know, just like JFK did. It's just now they just don't shoot you in the middle of the city. They they destroy you in other ways. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only interesting thing here is that <laughs> it's so funny because the FISA 7, I think it's the FISA 702 courts, um, those FISA warrants, which were specifically used by the Obama campaign to spy on Trump, he renewed them. <laughs> like they, they use this on you and you renew it. Like, why wouldn't you say, I'm not going to fucking renew that. And this is the because he that, didn't like, know. Because I mean, it's just like everybody else. Dude, this is every- well. Well, it's after. just like everybody has said for for the extent of Donald Trump's like freaking, you know, uh, pushing into the political life. He does. Mm. He's never read a book. He didn't know what any of this <laughs> shit means. And he yeah. didn't that obviously he didn't have the best people. Like mm. that's obvious. So like, yeah, he's, he's just going along with whatever he's told his mm. people are telling him, yeah, 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 go, you want, you want to renew this Rand Paul's over there. Like, no, you fucking idiot. Yeah. And he's still just doing whatever the fuck he's going to do. Well, that's probably, he was probably talking to Lindsey Graham that day. Lindsey Graham probably brought him his big Mac and he said, oh, thank you, Lindsey. This is the best big Mac I ever had. Five or seven Oh two warrants sign him right and then Rand, exactly. yeah on, on the day that it came the bomber ran he had Rand paul and tucker carlson on the phone and they said nah dude you don't want that smoke yeah exactly <laughs> that's probably how it went down <laughs> yeah <laughs> for real and so yeah it, it, he never had that he doesn't have that he has like a business instinct and he has an instinct yeah. as to there's something wrong which yeah. i mean i can go i can walk into the store i work for and and talk to any normie any average person in there they're gonna say yeah there's something wrong with this country right now yeah you know so anybody's like willing to identify that 
you know, and having the balls and the money and, and the ability to try to take it on. Hey man, props. All right, dude, yeah. like, whatever. I, I disagree with some of your, some of the things you've done, but I ain't mad at you. Like, I understand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like I ain't mad. So, do you think that with all these charges coming down on him, all these indictments that he's actually going to make it through the primaries because there have been a, uh, I know that I've, I've seen a few little inklings here and there. People are saying, oh, well, um, he's going to have to drop out. He's not going to be able to to actually completely run as, through the primaries and make it through the primaries because he's going to be so tied up in court that he's not going to be able to like campaign. So if that's the case, what do you see happening with the Republican Party? Um, so my opinion is... Uh, I guess I'll start with the Republican Party and then we'll move to kind of what I think what will happen with Donald Trump. Um, now, if Donald Trump is out of the picture completely, I honestly believe that DeSantis will probably beat Biden pretty easily. Um, DeSantis is sharp and he's really, really smart with like hiring and firing people. So I think he'll have a good team with him to kind of prep everything up and uh, make sure. Even, with his, even with his Nazi videos. <laughs> well, I, I was just watching videos actually earlier today of uh they're calling him a revisionist historian because he was uh he like Kamala Harris wouldn't debate him about something uh something like he was teaching more about slavery in schools or something like that I, I it was something stupid that uh you know of course everybody just loses their mind about because DeSantis isn't a uh you know progressive so anything that he does and he's actually not afraid to use government for his own you know desires which you know take that for better or for worse sometimes it's for worse and sometimes it's for better right um but yeah so basically i would think DeSantis is probably gonna be the number one guy i think that he would beat biden if trump is completely out of the picture but now moving on to trump if uh I think this is going to be a pretty bloody battle. I thought it was going to be pretty easy for DeSantis to go after Trump. And I thought it would have been like a pretty tight fight, but it's looking more and more like Trump is going to walk over DeSantis pretty good. If DeSantis doesn't get his ass in gear, I mean, we still have a year and a half before all this shit really kind of comes to fruition, but, uh, Donald Trump's a fucking billionaire and his fucking, you know, the people that donate to him, love him. Uh, he raised millions of dollars for his legal fees and pocketed most of it. Um, same deal with like all the election fraud lawsuits that came out. Um, I think he raised $250 million and only spent $40 million on the actual lawsuits. So um, yeah, he may be busy in court, but I mean, like even that I'd like, I haven't paid too, too much attention to like him being in court, but like, I don't know if he's even gone. I don't know if they're just sending him letters and he's saying, you know, pound salt, I'm not going to go or what exactly is going on. But I think he'll still make it through the primary. And I think if it's him versus Biden, I think Trump loses. But if it's DeSantis versus Biden, I think uh, DeSantis wins. So you don't think, you don't think this uh, Vivek is, is causing enough of a stink to bypass DeSantis because before Beatrix got bit by a snake. <laughs> I remember <laughs> hearing he had he had pulled neck and neck with DeSantis in the polls. So I was talking to Brady about this earlier, and apparently this was done by a poll. I want to say it was a Democrat poll with some that like got their numbers way, way wrong because I thought the same thing. This is just what he's told me, and he's a lot more in touch with like GOP politics. Um and I think they said that like some lady that was running against DeSantis at one point, um, she was way up on DeSantis, like by the same polling company, and he like completely smoked her. So I guess this was just like one poll that uh, Vivek had climbed in. But from what I understand, most of the other ones, he's still at like one percent, which is kind of sad because I would actually prefer him out of most of the other people. He's pretty slimy, but like I don't know, he at least sounds good right now. So like he's you know of course i like his books a... i've read his books i like his yeah. books yeah. yeah um i i haven't read any of his books yet but i i i believe your judgment i trust your judgment <laughs> so um he had put out a tweet a week after january 6 which anybody with a brain knows that like that was that was nothing like if they wanted to siege the capital like if, if there was millions of people in front of the Capitol and they really wanted to make some fucking noise, they would have made some noise. They wouldn't have went to Pelosi's desk and farted and put their feet up and played on her laptop. They would have been breaking shit. Um, 
he put out a tweet literally a week after January 6th and said what Trump did last week was disgusting or something like that. And then, of course, he's all about, oh, we need to pardon him. And he, not that he's wrong, but like, well, he has he doing. has clarified on on how he has gotten more information since then. So, I mean, I don't really hold people to that standard. Like a lot of people will call that like flip flopping, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they, but they do this with all politicians. And it's like, well, if, if you get more information mm -hmm. and it changes your mind, like for an average person, that's okay. But for somebody who decides they're going to run for po uh, political office, that's not okay. Well, it's like, no, I, I kind of would like my, the politicians to be informed and, and to change their minds when they're wrong. So he has, he has commented on that and he has had conversations about that. So I don't take that too personally. I don't, I don't look at that too, too seriously. I mean, it, you know, we were only given the information they wanted us to have, mm. but I mean, I'm not like caught up on any of these guys, like, like real, I kind of like have the opinion I should vote for Donald Trump just because so many people I hate, hate him. You know, <laughs> that's, like, that's yeah. kind of my opinion at this point. That seems but, to be like the majority of people I talk to. That seems to be their opinion. Like, I don't even hear a lot of people saying like, I like Trump. They're just like, he makes a lot of people mad. <laughs> yeah. All the people I hate, hate him. So it's like, yeah. all right, well, he must be doing something right. Even though I, maybe I don't see it. Maybe I maybe I'm un, unable to recognize exactly what he's doing that is correct, but he's making the right people mad. And I'm like, okay, but I mean, I I don't know. Um, what do you make of um uh, RFK Jr.? I it, it breaks my heart because he's the only good candidate on China. He's the only one that's saying like we should not go to war with China and all the other candidates may like pay lip service to that, but they're extremely hawkish. He's the only mm -hmm. one that is not hawkish on China. So um, really, really like RFK until this whole Israeli shilling campaign where they called him an anti-Semite. And now he cannot do enough to just bow down and kiss the ring of Israel. Like if he would have just said like, Hey, I'm not an anti-Semite like do is, Hey, this is my friend, Rabbi Shmuley. Who's like the slimiest motherfucker on the face of the planet. Um, I, I would have not liked it, but I've been okay with it. But like, he is just doing this huge groveling fucking campaign to do everything he can to remove the anti-Semitic stain off his career. And it's just so fucking gross, but um, that that's the worst of him. The best of him is the way that he gives the political left somebody to rally around around being anti-war, anti-mandate, um, anti-big corporation, all uh, just a complete and total repudiation of everything that the Democrats have stood for for the last 30 years. He gives the people on the left somebody to rally around who's just an absolute refutation to all of that. And I love that about him. But once again, this whole Israeli thing. If you're going to bow down and cry and grovel for weeks on end because you got called a name, I don't think you're ready to take on the fucking deep state. Trump wasn't ready to do it, and he didn't do that kind of shit. He still kissed the ring of the deep state every time something mattered. But, like, if you're doing this campaign tour and we're still, like, a year and a half out from the election and you're groveling this hard, I have zero faith that you'll do anything meaningful when the time comes. Because if all it takes is someone calling you an anti-Semite to fucking break your resolve, I have, like, zero faith in you. But regardless, still the good thing is, is that he gives – you know people who we wouldn't normally reach somebody you know like an olive branch to come closer to us so in that respect i i love what he's doing okay yeah, yeah I, I thought it was interesting when um uh, i was interviewing daniel mcadams um at, who was that um he he had said that um trying to remember exactly where my mind was going oh he had said that um <clears throat> he had never he hadn't sent uh, seen Ron, uh, Ron Paul this excited about a candidate ever in his life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, Ron Paul likes him that much. Maybe I should look at him a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like, I don't know. Just, I don't really have like, I, you know, I, I've, I figured out, I don't think I'm actually libertarian. 
in any way, shape or form. I think I'm just such an old school blue collar guy that anything authority is like, fuck you. You know, and that's just my mindset. Like any government, like, have you ever seen, um, uh, what was that movie with Brad Pitt and, uh, yeah, I can't think of the name of it. Please now. tell me you're oh, gonna say more legend Freeman. Legends of the Fall. No, oh, no. The movie Legends it. of the Fall. All right. So Anthony Hopkins is like Brad Pitt's dad, and he has a yeah. stroke. Well, well, Brad Pitt's brother goes and works for the government, and he shows up at their at their house, and his dad comes out. Anthony Hopkins is looking at his oldest son, and he's going, Screw the government, screw them. And that's, that's kind of how I feel about all so, of it. So you're saying you're Dale Gripple. Yes. <laughs> I just hate all of that. I just hate it all. So it's like, I'm not so much libertarian. I'm just anti-government. I'm just like, fuck all of you people. You know, just leave me alone. I just yeah, not- raise my chickens and freaking eat, man. That's all I want to do. Drink my beer, raise my chickens and just enjoy my life. Yeah. No, nah, dude, I, d- I definitely feel you. I- bitches. I think I'm just going to get a flip phone and just fucking forget all this shit exists. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> no, nah, dude, I feel that uh, the, the blue collar disciplined lifestyle where you wake up on time, you go to work early, you know, you do your bit, you do your day's work and then you go home and you know, you do whatever you're going to do at home. That's fucking my life too, dude. You know, four 30 every single morning, you know, take the dogs for a walk, make my breakfast, do whatever I got to do you know, bust it out work, bust a couple knuckles and, you know, hopefully fix a few wires or motherfuck some cars, <laughs> come home, you know, work out. And then, you know, on the weekends, hopefully go see music, go play music, enjoy some margaritas or whiskey. You know, that's my fucking life in a nutshell, dude. Yeah, man. It's like all the rest of this shit is way too complicated for me. Yeah. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm really a simple is. person with simple needs, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to fucking play music. But my bass player, who actually, funny enough, was at January 6th. I remember him saying, just all I want to do is just wear black and play bass. Like the rest of this shit, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> it was like, yeah. yeah He's I like, like I thought it was going to be cool. And then I got there and I was like, <laughs> Jesus, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's the most awesome dude ever. Uh, he said he wanted to do the show sometimes. So I'll probably have him on sometime soon. I'd love to have all my uh, band members on, you know, I'm fucking 200 over 200 episodes deep and I haven't done it yet, but uh, he would be an entertaining guest. Cause he's a former Navy seal and, you know, multi-business owner, you know, same dude, you know, mechanic, just like me. And he's played all over the country. So, you know, I'm sure the listeners and everybody really enjoy that. And, you know, just all around good dude. So um, yeah, man, I, I, I definitely agree with him though. Let me, you know, get my guns, eat whatever the fuck I want to eat. Let me, you know, wear black and play heavy music on the weekends and be happy. Other than that, yeah. fuck the rest of you. Yeah, you know, the rest of the shit, I don't know. I don't know yeah. if it's worth all the trouble, man. It's a headache sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so. well, you know, if I bring it back to that. Um, I, I think I talked to you a little bit about this, but that whole uh, teaching gig that was uh, kind of upsetting. And he's actually been one of the people that keeps telling me to get a lawyer. And I actually had somebody else tell me yesterday I should get a lawyer. And I'm... I'm iffy on it, but I, I think I may at least call somebody, but, you know, Reed and I also talked about this where like, is all this stuff worth it? Like having an online presence and putting a message out there when like, you know, I just basically pissed away a comfy job for the rest of my life because I want to do this. And I'm not saying that I would change it because probably wouldn't because you know, I got to meet you Reed and all the other fucking awesome people that I've had on the show and shit like that. But, you know, you got to start at, for some people that sacrifice may be, you know, I'll remain anonymous and, you know, won't fucking say a word. And at this point now, after going through what I went through, I respect that a lot more. I think I had a little less respect prior, but, um, you know, I, I get why people won't, don't want to put their head up because it it fucking costs you for some people that will cost you your fucking livelihood. And it's absolute bullshit, but I mean, it is the fucking world we live in. And that, um, that's probably why I'm not like that mad about it is because like, I knew this could have happened right from the start. And I understand it's a world we live in all the other people, like my dad (laughs) and my bass player were probably more angry than me. Like they, I can't tell you how many times they're like, man, you should like go after them. And I'm like, in my heart, I'm not an angry person. I get it. it is what it is. It's fucking bullshit. But, you know, w- what am I supposed to do? I asked if there was anything I could do to remedy it. They said no. Let it go. Yeah, and I mean, like, what's the best that's going to come at, 
out of it if you do go after him. Right. You know? Well, what are they going to take? Me? A, it's going to take a lot of time and energy on your part mm-hmm. to get what a, a couple thousand bucks or they're going to offer you a job now that you now you don't want it because you know that the only reason they're offering it to you is because they had pressure put on us like and then they'll fire me at the first chance anyways right yeah (laughs) Yeah. they'll find they'll find something yeah yeah so uh, i don't even know if it'd be worth it to i I mean yeah make your phone call you know Mm -hmm. see see what you can find out but i don't i don't think anything good is going to come of it yeah. yeah, I I generally agree. And I mean, it was kind of like a handshake deal because they said, okay, well, you like, we're going to hire you, but you have to pass a school board review. So like, that was my thinking like, oh, well, if that makes the court, then they're just going to fucking throw it out. But I think their argument, you know, in this situation would be like, okay, well, the school board is biased against your political beliefs and against the speech that you say, which I think is reasonable, but I think we know, you know, they'll wipe their ass with that and tell me to get the fuck out of the courtroom. Right. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth it. I mean, explore it, see what, see what, you know, a good attorney says, but because I'm definitely not a good attorney. (laughs) No, maybe I'll call Pat. Maybe I'll see if I can get him on the case. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You probably don't want to fucking deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the person to ask because I'd just be like, oh, yeah, let's go burn the place down. It'll be all right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And this one's off YouTube now. No, I I don't know. Maybe we're not. We're not literally going to do that. (laughs) No, I said I I said I would say do it. I didn't say I would (laughs) do it. (laughs) Close enough. Oh well. Yeah, dude. I and you know me. Now I'm in now I'm inciting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean now you're like complicit in January 6th, right? Yeah. Just 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 spray paint BLM on it before you set it on fire. It'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can just uh, tell the uh tell the news networks if they ask me, oh, it's a mostly peaceful protest. It was was mostly peaceful. (laughs) Peaceful but fiery. Yeah, peaceful but fiery. Yeah, you know what's funny is actually um I saw the guitar player from Seven Dust posted a picture and like this is 2023. He said, I'm going to do the first thing I've done in 26 years of playing in this band. I'm going to miss a show because I was exposed to somebody with COVID. I'm like, we're still doing this. Jeez. Yeah. I'm no, like, it's oh. all right. no, when we were in the hospital with Beatrix, I saw probably three nurses. The wearing freaking masks for no reason, sitting at a computer, yeah. wearing masks, and I'm like, hey, "What is the is the computer sick? Like, what's happening? <laughs> is there is there like a virus on that screen or something?" I'm not <laughs> yeah, but all right, man, I'm gonna have to let you go. I gotta go uh put the chickens away. I gotta go lock them up. You gotta it's, zip your cocks up. It's dark outside. I do have to zip my cocks up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's dark. It's dark outside. I got to go out there and lock these fuckers up. So, nice. plug away. Nice. Well, uh, you guys can find me at Kamatovic on Twitter. That's K Y L E M A T O V C I K. The podcast is called In Liberty and Health. Um, band's called A Common Crown. We just released our single Heartless less than a month ago, which is a total ripper. And hopefully, we'll get the other songs out sometime soon. I've been saying that for like three fucking years now, but we at least got one out there. So, that's what matters. Um, yeah, and then uh, there will be a cool project with me and a couple other people that uh, everybody's familiar with coming up here uh, later this month. Uh, so look around for that. I don't know if we solidified everything, but I think you're going to like it. And I know you were one of the people that we talked about having on. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout. Cool, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to end the recording. And hopefully Beatrix is no longer snake bitten. <laughs>